And these are going to be our arachnids, and we do have a good number of orders of arachnids. Not all of them, but we do have quite a few in here. So this one is going to smell pretty bad, Mr. Dilworth. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> These are uh, former pets of mine that uh, have got new life while being uh, educational tools here. And so, let's go ahead and talk about some of the different groups. I guess the one that we have the most of is going to be uh, Aranae. These are our spiders. And so your spiders basically boil down into two basic types. You have your aranomorph spiders, like wolf spiders, where their fangs go sideways, so they pinch sideways like that. And then you have megalomorph spiders, like your tarantulas, where their fangs go down underneath. And so I can show you on this one right here. These large fangs, they just tuck underneath, so they tuck back just like that. So that's the difference between the two big morphs. Uh, typically, tarantulas are considered to be a little bit more primitive. And we have quite a few different ones from all around the world here. Uh, I probably won't go into too much detail. I'll point out a couple things. This nice bright orange one right here. This is an orange baboon tarantula. This is a little itty bitty male. Uh, females obviously get a lot larger, but uh, these guys have really potent venom. And then we have a couple of uh, South American tarantulas. Here's a Panama blonde, uh, same genus. We have a, uh, oh, uh, I have a hard time with common names. Uh, Venezuelan sun tiger, uh, that's a pretty one. Uh, we have a Brachypelma aratum here. This is a flame knee. Below that we have a purple pink toe, a Vicularia purpurea. Uh, this is one of the most purple spiders you'll ever see. Well, that purple does not show up. There we go. Now it's a little hard purple. to see. These guys are kind of old, so their colors are going to be fading. Uh, here's a Haplopelma von Worthy. It's one of the earth tigers. And then we have, these are some, tech, uh, not Texas natives, but U.S. natives. These are Arizona blondes. And so this is a female, this is a male. You can see the size difference on them is crazy. Females tend to be big and stocky and males tend to be a little bit on the scrawny side. All right, so those are our spiders, Aaron A. We're gonna move on to our next group, and that is Scorpiones. And these are the true scorpions. So these five right here, one, two, three, four, five, these guys are the true scorpions. We have a flat tail scorpion. Oh, I'm sorry, there's six. We have a large flat rock here. This is an olive flat rock, and this is a troglodyte flat rock. So this is the longest species of scorpion in the world. You'll see they have that really long, tail right there. It's not actually a tail. It's actually part of their body, but uh, very long. And then we have a Asian forest scorpion. This is a red claw emperor. This is the largest scorpion in Texas. This is the uh, uh, this is Diplocentris whitei, which is I think the black burrowing scorpion. Uh, they get a little bit bigger than this one, but uh, that's about as big as they get. And then we have Centroides vitatus, the little guy that's all around San Angelo. We see them everywhere. Yep. So those are our true scorpions. And I say that because we have a couple other critters, like down here at the very bottom. This is a Amblypigid. This is the tailless whip scorpion. But this is not a true scorpion. It is called a scorpion, but it is not a true scorpion. Different order of arachnid entirely. And uh, they're really impressive because they have this little front leg right here that's almost three times the length of their body. So they have some super antenniform front legs. Uh, these guys, actually, you know what? I have a living one. Hold that right there, because I just caught this on the last trip I went out. This is a really cool critter right here. So this uh, is an amblypigid that is native to Texas. So we have these guys here, not very many of them. And so this is probably one of the more rare arachnids that we have in the state. Uh, finally found one. It took me about four years to find my first one. And then I finally uh, found them. And then it's taken me about another year to see them. So I'll let you look. This is Phrynus operculatus. This is a living one right here. And this is our only native amblypigid here in Texas. We have about three species in the U.S. all together, but these guys are extremely hard to find. You can see them feeling around with those little legs. Got some little food in there for them. But he's feeling around. These guys do not have good eyesight, but you can touch that and they respond pretty well. But that is definitely a neat one to show you guys because uh, not very many people have seen this. In fact, you're probably one of the handful of people that have ever seen one of these live in person. So that's pretty neat. All righty. Got a good look for the camera there. Excellent. Now, we've got two more orders to look at. Uh, this right here, we have shown you a vinegaroon before. 
Uh, these guys are Thelophonida. They are not scorpions, but they are called whip scorpions. They're also called vinegaroons because they spray concentrated vinegar from their rear end right here. And they also have those nice little antenniform front legs, not as extreme as the amblypigids, but they are pretty uh, noticeable. They feel around with those as well. And then our last one here, this is a camel spider. This is the order Sulfugae, or Sulfugid, however you like to say it. There's a lot of different names for them. But uh, these guys do not have really much going on, other than they have huge, huge mouth parts. And if I can grab something real quick. Unfortunately, they are very, very difficult to keep alive in captivity. And the one that I had just captured did not last very long. But here's a female. You can see a little bit larger than the male here. I'm going to try pinning her out a little bit later. But I did get her in the freezer. So these guys have massive mouth parts that they use to hunt with. They're almost always moving. They're very, very difficult to keep alive in captivity. Uh, we're not really sure why. they got a huge food requirement. They also move around a lot. So not entirely sure why they don't last. But uh, this is our largest species of camel spider. We have about... Uh, yeah, we got about 31, 33 species, somewhere in that range of uh, these guys here in Texas alone. So we do have quite a few, but most of them don't get this big. Pretty nifty looking arachnid. Pretty feisty guys, too. Those things give me the heebie-jeebies, Mr. Maddox. I don't much care for them myself, even though they're one of the ones that will probably do the least amount of damage to you. Right. They just look creepy. All righty. So... Uh, that's what our talk is today, guys. Went over a few of these cases. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to see you guys next time, and hopefully, you learned something. Alrighty, guys. Bye bye.